All right, I'm going to show you guys um, the very first thing I do when building a quad. Um, when I get the FC in. Here's the FC for my next build. My next build is going to be that new um, GEP RC X130 frame from Banggood. Um, and I got this Flip32. This is what I always use, the Flip32 Deluxe from Ready to Fly Quads. I either use this or the Dragonfly 32 Compact from Multi Rotor Mania. Um, they're both exactly the same. Um, only difference is the options that they give you, you know, for what you want, like the buzzer and the Spectrum Satellite plug and things like that, firmware that you want. So the first thing I do is flash my FC because you don't want to be having any issues building up your quad and then finding out that you have to get to the bootloader pins or something like that you know on on your quad and it's all put together and all soldered up you know so um i was going to show you guys this thing that i had to uh where is it oh man i don't know where it is I have this little button that basically a lot of the new FCs come with a button for your bootloader instead of having to solder wires onto it. Um, and I had found one inside of like an old transmitter or something I took apart and I was going to use it. But um, it's best if, if you flash it first thing like I'm about to do and then have it all set up how you need to and everything then you shouldn't need to to get to the bootloader pads again unless some kind of crazy shit happens <laughs> I mean here's a little tip um, if you go to flash your FC and it says timeout just click flash again real fast and it'll work um, I've <laughs> I didn't know that to begin with um, a long time ago when I was first flashing and it would say time out and I would be like, oh shit, and, you know, I'd have to take it apart and solder a jumper to the bootloader pins and then go flash it and it would work. All you have to do is just click flash again. So I'm going to show you my settings that I use and then I'm going to show you how to set up a Spectrum satellite. Well, this is a lemon satellite, but you know what I mean. And that's about it. So, first thing you want to do, I'm going to be using the Betaflight GUI. So, you want to open up your GUI, plug it in. Um, click on Firmware Flasher. Click on what kind of board you have. This is a, a Naze Rev 5, so Naze. 2.9 is working awesome for me. Full chip erase. Load firmware online. Scroll down to where you can see the bar. Click flash firmware. <clears throat> and it's flashing. And in the meantime you can listen to Minnie Mouse singing some Shit. <laughs> All right, successful. I always click welcome. I don't know. You don't have to. Maybe you do. Connect. Okay, I go to ports first. Click on serial RX for the UART2, and this is if you're using the satellite receiver. Save and reboot. Configuration. Now this is just my settings. Okay, this is how I like my quads. One shot, 125 is what I use. Motor stop. Uh, minimum throttle, 1030. Maximum, 2000. Come down here, uh, receiver mode, serial. I don't use VBAT. Well, I do, but not on this one. Um, DX6. And I'm using DSMX. 
so that's 2048. Um, and the jabber frequency and PID frequency, I found what works best for me is 2K for both. Um, I did fly with 1K and the quad was just shaky. It just wasn't good. I put it on 2K and it was amazing. So 2K, then uh, save and reboot. I don't mess with failsafe. It works awesome stock for me. I like to have the motors basically just shut off when you shut off your receiver or your transmitter. So that's good. Pid tuning. Um, I do like the Super Expo rates. You can see the difference over here when I turn it off. <laughs> Look at that. That's crazy. <clears throat> um, I don't mess with my PIDs really. I'll turn I down to 30. And I can't really say that this is exactly how it's going to be for this next quad that I'm building because, you know, everyone's different. But I will basically just always put it at a certain spot and then go from there. <clears throat> and most of the time I don't even need to change anything. So that's it for the PIDs. Um, sometimes I'll have to change the gyro filter. I'll put them down to 50, but I usually, usually don't need to. But that's just if you uh, have like noise in your motors and whatnot, and uh, if your FC isn't, if your FC is shaking or vibrating or not mounted in a good way, you can turn these filters down and your quad will fly a little better, a little smoother, but it'll still, it'll take away from things like prop wash and stuff like that, so I usually don't mess with them. I don't mess with TPA or throttle mid or expo. Receiver for my setup, it's got to be on spectrum. I don't mess with dead band, sometimes I'll put it at 5 if I need, but I usually don't. Um, modes, I'm not going to do this, but I like to have um, Horizon and Acro on one switch, Air Mode on another switch, and then uh, Beeper on another switch, and that's all I use. Okay, so next will be... Um, what am I doing? I'm trying to get down here. <laughs> oh, where's the GUI? Come on. What the hell, man? Um, what is going on here? Where's the GUI? Oh, there's one more thing. I forgot about. I always like to have my uh, USB plug on the right side. So, so stock, the board is like this with the USB coming out the back. And that just does not work with a build. So you need it to be on either side, this side or this side. And I like to have it on this side because I use this plug right here. And um, it just is in the way if it's back here. So I like to have it up front with USB to the right. So what that will be is 270 degrees. For your yaw. Then 
can see now it's it's forward. Everything's right. And the USB's out to the right. Okay, so back to this. Like, what the hell? Maybe somebody can explain to me where it, what happened to the GUI. You can't get to it if it, if it's on full screen mode. What the hell? Because there's no slider to slide the shit down. That's crazy. They gotta fix that shit. So you have to make the minimize the screen to be able to get to the CLI. So anyway, <clears throat> I'm wasting time here. Uh, this is what you want to do. For my setup, um, uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have power to this, so I'm not gonna be able to show you. I'll just show you what you write <clears throat> in the CLI. So set space spectrum underscore sat underscore bind space equals space and then for DSMX, use the number 9. For DSM2, use the number 5. So I'm using X. That's 9. Then you hit Enter. Then you type the word Save. Enter. Then it'll save and reboot. Then when you go to put power to this, um, your satellite will start flashing real fast red. And that's when you bind to your radio. Then after it's bound, you'll hold down the bind switch or whatever on your radio and then the LED will go solid. Then you let go. Then you turn off your radio, turn off your quad. Then you come back into here. Minimize the screen to get to the CLI. Then you type set space spectrum underscore sat underscore bind space equals space zero enter save enter oops what happened let me try that again did I push something on accident I think I did that little colon thing there whatever the hell that is parentheses Damn it. Alright, I gotta do it again. Set, space, spectrum, underscore, sat, underscore, bind, space equals, space zero, enter, type the word save, enter, there you go. That way, now, every time, it'll, it'll always be bound, so you just have to turn on your radio first, and then your quad. And I like to wait like five seconds so it finds a good signal and it has a good bind and everything. So, All right, that's about it for this video. So thanks for watching.